If you were 20 again, knowing what you know now, oh my God, what would you do different? I would be very different around men. Like what? I would be more in charge and less need of their uh, approval. It would be fun to watch that unfold <laughs> with the knowledge I have now. I've often wondered about that. What would it, be? it wouldn't be fabulous. Or even 30. Yeah. Because now I don't need them. Then I was under some delusion that I did, some narrative I was feeding myself. But I think it has to do with biology more than anything. You know, your, 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 your fallopian tubes and your ovaries are like, come on, man, we're ready to like drop one. And I think that's what, I think that's a lot of what drives it. And now you don't need. I do not really need it. And I realize that platonic love is just as valuable and I'm, I'm in as much in need of platonic love as I am of sexual erotic love. But wait a minute, girl, I know you. You love desire. Yeah, I do. But you know what? I don't have just sort of desire, general desire. It's when I meet somebody who I desire. Ooh. Do you know what I mean? Completely. If you were 20 again, knowing what you know now, oh my God, what would you do different? I would be very different around men. Like what? I would be more in charge and less need of their uh, approval. It would be fun to watch that unfold <laughs> with the knowledge I have now. I've often wondered about that. What would it, be? it wouldn't be fabulous. Or even 30. Yeah. Because now I don't need them. Then I was under some delusion that I did, some narrative I was feeding myself. But I think it has to do with biology more than anything. You know, your, 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 your fallopian tubes and your ovaries are like, come on, man, we're ready to like drop one. And I think that's what, I think that's a lot of what drives it. So how do you live a full, a full life? By being what you are, who you are. It takes a long time to do that, though. Because, you know, in your 20s, you know, you're busy trying to impress a boyfriend or you're busy trying to impress, impress your friends. And over the decades, you begin to understand that that is... I, I don't have the energy for it. It's exhausting. Uh, so, uh, by doing what you want to do, what makes you happy, finding out what, what it is that makes you want to get up and do it. about that. Where did that come from? When did it come? I've been like you? that ever since I was a little kid. I've liked, I've loved clothes. But I'll tell you, I don't care much about fashion, but I do love style. Mm -hmm. Because style is a, is a response to life. Mm -hmm. And um, in terms of putting clothes together, just be fearless. If you think it's not going to work, try it anyway. You know, it's, it's just, then, you know, if I don't like it, I don't wear it. And did it change as you got older? Like, I, I think I got better at it. I refined it. And I'm also mostly interested in wearing stuff that looks great for me, that makes me feel good. I, I don't dress for anyone else but myself. And was that always the case when you were younger? I don't think so. So how has sex and love changed for you as you've grown older? Sex? What's that? <laughs> Does that answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> so is it your libido that's changed? No, it's stronger. Mm. So what I is... I think I've always had a high libido. I don't want to get, really get into that for too much. But yeah, no, it, I, 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 well, the fact that pregnancy is not an issue is huge, right? Right. So it's, are you just getting fussier? Is that what's going on? I've always been fussy. Mm. I've always been I've always been particular about what I like. Sex and love, they're not, you know, they're not the same thing, obviously. But I certainly can't have sex with someone I don't like for very long, or someone I'm not attracted to. There are these women that can say, "Oh, you know, I can compartmentalize," or "You know, I don't have to like." Yeah, you know, if I'm having sex with you, it's because I like you, and I want you in my life. Mm, mm, mm. So you want a hiatus now? 
By what? Your Honor, I, I misspelled wrong. Time. How about love and relationships? How has that changed as you've gotten older? Well, the thing that I finally realized was that I didn't want a partnership. I wanted companionship. Partnership means we're sharing the money, we're figuring out money issues together, I don't know, we're sharing real estate. I don't want any of that with someone, you know, come into my apartment, I've taken the time, lovingly curated it exactly how I want it. No, you can't put your whale pictures on my wall. I'm not clearing any space for your stuff. I mean, a little bit, I mean, you know, right. a little bit, but I, no, this is my space, this is an expression of who I am, and that's, that's what I want but it would be nice to have a person to do fun stuff with companionship right but not living together uh, yeah if, if there's an east wing and a west wing <laughs> I mean that it's no no I don't want that so looking so good does it ever bother you <laughs> That I look so good? <laughs> First of all, I don't think I look so good anymore. Sometimes I do. I'll look in the mirror and go, no, you know, no, no, it isn't bad. And sometimes I'll look and I'll, if I take a selfie and I think, oh no, oh my God, this can't be happening. <laughs> so I'll leave, that, I'll leave that to other people. So why New York? You're very passionate about New York. Why New York? People think it's not a place to retire. To my mind, it's the only place to retire. Can you imagine being in a suburb somewhere or, or a, a, a place where they're not, the, the people are around you everywhere. If I get bored, I can window shop, I can go to a bar and have conversations with people. There are people in front of me, there are people all around me. All you have to do is be ballsy enough to talk to them. But there's been a lot of bullshit about COVID and how it's changed the city, your reaction? Oh, well, it has changed the city. Yeah. I mean, I see a lot of wonderful little shops shuttered and closed down, which is very sad to me. And what I don't like a trend that I'm seeing is that major corporations are taking over the storefronts and their franchises, and I hate it. It's making a once fascinating city actually verging on being boring. Mm. And that better never happen in this, this town. Or you're out. Absolutely. What have you felt the most sexually free in your life? What decade? I, I think later in my life. I think starting in my 60s. Really? It's not that I wasn't free about sex. It's just that I feel more liberated about my expression of it. And, you know, asking for what you want. I think that's very difficult for women. Yes. I think it is. Asking for what you want. Right. That changes. And I think men don't really want you to tell them what you want. I think they want to think they know what you want. And I had a don't... great I had a great a, a great voice teacher who said, Men don't like it when women give themselves freely because they want to take it. Oof. I think he has a point. And this is a man who said that. So how do you deal with your inner critic? Do you have one? Meditation. Do I have one? <laughs> Doesn't everyone? I mean, I think that's the bane of everybody's existence. The inner critic, you have to listen to that conscience and says, oh, maybe you better not do that, that's dangerous. Or, or, or if you get a little spidey sense about somebody, a guy maybe who might not be on the up and up, you need to listen to that. But the critic, you don't need to listen to anymore. You have mm. to silence that. You've got to figure out a way to, to, to smother that thing. Because it, it may feel real, and it does feel real, and it is real, but it is not necessarily true. So how do you avoid having regrets in life? I don't have many, but the ones that I do have, I try not to um, let it fester. Mm. Yeah, I try not to give it too much oxygen. That's good. Do you have a, a list for your next lover? No. Mm. Lists. No. <laughs> I mean, the same thing everybody wants. But, well, well, he needs to be financially solvent and, you mm. know, not to pay my way, to pay his own. Uh, and uh, funny and intelligent and 
don't bore me. <laughs> I mean, I could almost be abused before I could be bored. I mean, really, I can suffer most things in life but boredom. <laughs> so what is the biggest challenge you've had in your life? Well, my career was a huge challenge. I think the biggest challenge is accepting myself. Mm. And that has takes it changed? a lifetime. That takes a lifetime. Yes, more so. I mean, I had these ideas about what women should be like, mm. and I, you know, I thought, you know, if you, do, you know, to get a man, you have to be vulnerable, and you know, don't talk a whole lot. And, you know, I used to have these, these, these monologues going on in my head, and I think now. Oh shit, I am who I am. I can't imagine you ever. Oh, I did all the time, of course, like any other woman. Mm. And when, what, what decade did that change for you? What is it? Fuck this. I think it's this. a process. Mm. I think, you know, when you're in your 20s, you're always comparing yourself to, I don't know, a movie star or, you know, this girl who was more popular in school or, you know, I mean, when you're in high school and then in your 20s, you know, you have all kinds of insecurities as a woman. We have different ones than men do. And I think it takes a lifetime to finally say, yeah, come on, life is short. Uh, here, it, we're here, this is it. This is the game, this is not a rehearsal. You're who you are. Mm -hmm. You better figure out how to like it. You got yourself and you better be good company for yourself because that's about all you have. I mean, you have friendships, but you know, your mind is the only thing that goes with you wherever you wind up, so. Okay. Your mind is the only thing you have. It goes with you wherever you go. So make it be something that's good company. So you're still interested in a man in your life, right? Well, if only I liked them better. <laughs> I mean, I'm not interested in women, but for some reason, most men I can't stand. <laughs> Why is that? Well, they talk too much. Mm. I've been on a lot of dates. They have a difficult time listening. Um, yeah, I just mostly can't stand them. I bet you were a better dater when you were young. Um, yeah, I probably was. I didn't like them much then either, but I was better than I am now. <laughs> and now there's less time to put up with it. Well, there's that, that's for sure. And I know pretty quickly that this isn't going to work. If I gave you a decade, I'm going to ask you, give me a word that describes your sex life. Twenties. Constant. Thirties. <laughs> a little less constant. Forties. Constant. Fifties. Less constant. 60s. Great. Hmm. 70s. I would say fairly non-existent. Talk about rage in women. Are you still full of rage? Has it? Oh God, yeah. <laughs> has it changed as you've grown older? Well, I know how to control it more now. Rage isn't such a horrible thing. The Buddhists don't agree, and I was a Buddhist, kind of still a Buddhist, but rage can work on your behalf if you know how to control it. Mm. It can work for the betterment of other people too, because if you're angry enough, it motivates you to do something, but just railing against things because you're genuinely always pissed off, I guess that's not so great. So but how do you then channel, cha channel yours? Well, I know that if I go off, it's not gonna get me what I want. Mm. And I, you know, you, you know it, it, something makes you angry it's kind of an itch and you scratch it by blowing or something like that and you scratch an itch but it doesn't it doesn't really take care of the problem so it's you know, it's not a disciplined way to live mm. so you focus it yeah or I learned to let it pass and don't do anything about it